to do this a little different than what I was planning. I was going to go, I started yesterday morning and I was like, I'm going to go set up just based on everybody's questions. I was like, you know what? There's someone else who ne really needs this for uh, bubble backend using a bubble backend for, but it's the same exact thing. It's like, I have this third party data source. I want to use builder as a front end for this other part of my app. Like that one, the other one with bubble, he's got a full bubble app, but he wants to use our Chrome extensions, right? So he's going to have sign in on the Chrome extension, get and retrieve and create bubble data. Same exact setup as I want to use Builder as a front end, use Xano as a back end, use Firebase as a back end, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, and so really, I think what I need to do is make it more generalized. I, I was I was going to go in and just focus completely on Xano, which I will do. We'll use Xano as the like way to go through it because it's pretty much the same process for any of these third party auth uh, setups. Um, but rather than go and pre-figure it all out, I think what would be better is if we basically just figure it out together. So like I've got a Xano backend set up that I've never actually used. I've only ever used it just like in demos and testing and like checking things out with people. Um, so I've never set up anything in there. So we'll just see what, <laughs> what it's looking like in there. And I'm gonna go from scratch and create a builder app. I just made one just a minute ago. Um, we're just gonna make an app. We're going to create whatever pages are required. We're gonna look at their API we're gonna figure out what the calls are. We're gonna go create the actions in Builder to do each of those calls and store the proper information and all that back and forth. So um, this way I figured you can basically take these principles if you learn all this and apply it to any of these other backends that you wanna use this way. Um, so we'll see how this goes. It, it's a, uh, you know, just going in blind here, but it'll be fun. Um, and I think Trojan asked a question. Um, yeah, uh, I need to get back to you on the mix panel actions. Sorry about that, I haven't had time yet. Um, I, I need to go test them out in all my apps. L last time I looked, they were all working. Uh, when you, I think we DM back and forth about it, everything was working in my apps still. So something's up or maybe uh, it's just settings or something, uh, but we'll get that righted for you. There's definitely something we can do to fix it. So um, let me show my screen. And ta-da, all right. So. Brand new builder app um, and we have Xano open over here. I have these three tables in it that I just created like as a test a long time ago. Um, and I don't even know like what the state they're in, if they require authentication, if they don't or any of that. So we'll go see where they're at as we go through. Um, so let's first, let's talk about like generally what we're going to do. So I'm gonna have a page here and we're that page is, we'll just call it like a login page. now. Normally in Builder, you would use Builder's internal login mechanisms and you would, you know, email address and password or sign in with MetaMask or whatever it is. And that creates a session inside of Builder's backend. And we store like cookies and tokens and things like that for you on your behalf. And then all of that is used in Builder's backend to do things like confirm that that user can access a certain URL route or confirm that they can access certain data on the back end, that kind of thing. But when you're using Builder just as a front end and you're connecting with something else on the back end, you need them to actually authenticate into this other things back end if you want them to be treated as them in the other back end. So like if in Xano, you're restricting access to data in Xano based on who the user is, then the simplest way to do that, if it's just a simple front end in Builder, um, the simplest way to do that is actually to just put like login and password in the page in Builder. But then we're gonna do an authentication call out to Xano. Xano will then return a token for us that we can use as a session token for all future API calls that we do to Xano. And when we use that token, we're basically telling Xano, I'm doing this thing in Xano, creating or deleting or modifying or whatever we're doing, I'm doing that as this user who signed in because that token is now specific for that one user. And it's gonna be the same thing in the bubble backend if you use that, it's gonna be the same thing in really anything else. You're basically saying I'm signing in with them for that data and then all future requests just need to use it. And the way we're gonna store that token that we get back is in a cookie. So we'll use actions to set that into a cookie and then we'll reference that cookie value in everything else. All right, so let's take a look. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just drop a div on here. 
and we'll put an email address and a password field on here. And I am not gonna do any styling or anything. It's gonna be very ugly, but it will work. So we're just gonna have a button that says, sign in to Xeno. All right, so now we've got an email address, we have a password and we have a button to sign in. And then we're gonna make a flow. I'm just gonna go on click, sign in to Xeno. All right, now I'm gonna leave that flow alone for a minute and I'm gonna go look at Xano and see what are they, how do they want me to do this authentication? What do they use? So let's go into Xano and here's my database that I'm in and these are the tables I have. So you'll obviously have a different set of tables, uh, but this user one, I believe is a default table that they have in their backend and most anything you're gonna access, anything you're trying to do this with should have that same type of default thing. So I'm gonna click on that and I wanna look at different things. So here's related to API endpoints and a schema. So let's look at the endpoints. Okay, so in the endpoints, I have auth login, auth sign up, and auth me, which gets the current user uh, that belongs to the token. So that's nice. So we can do a couple things here. We can have a sign up page where, which we'll need to do because I don't have any users in here. So we'll actually need to like let them sign up, which is nice because then you can let them sign up in your builder app and sign in with the same credentials in the builder app afterward. Um, and then also you can do things like, okay, here's the token, go get the user information out of Xano and bring it back for things like displaying the username or displaying a user image or their email address or whatever you want to display like on a profile page or something. So one thing to note here is we're basically doing all the things that you would normally do by default if you're using builders backend, which just kind of built into the user um, uh, data set or data collection in builder. Basically, we're gonna do all those things manually here. So we're gonna retrieve the token, get it back. We're gonna get the data back from them. We're gonna set it into fields or into text boxes and inputs and things like that. So let's do a sign up. So let's add another button. I'll just duplicate this one. And we're gonna do sign up. We'll just do sign up like that. And on that one, we're gonna have a new flow called sign up. We're gonna add an API action. So everything is gonna be done pretty much with this API call for this back and forth, the generic one, um, because we're doing an auth call and I don't believe we have Xano auth call in here. So one thing we might do, Cora, is get like Xano auth call by default in here as an action type might just make things a little simpler for people. Um, the other thing we could do if we wanted to take this all the way and we, and after you'll talk to Drew, uh, to uh, you and Drew talk to Xano next week, we might end up making action types that just assume you have that or check if you have a session cookie already and it like automatically sets it and all that stuff. So we can automate a bunch of this if we do it specifically for them with actions. But for now we're gonna use this API call, the basic one. We're gonna call it sign up uh, Xano and let's go see what it is. So let's go into the sign up and let's see. So it's gonna be a post. So that's what this is saying here. So if I go back into builder, we'll change this to a post. And then we need to get what this URL is gonna be. So let's go back into Xano and see what the URL is. So we have this auth uh, slash auth sign up, but we need the full URL. So let's see. I clicked that and it just copied it. So I think I can just paste it in. So I'll just highlight this and paste. All right, so now we have the correct method from their API docs and we have the URL we're gonna send it to. Now we need to see how we need to send it. It's either going to be URL parameters or body to send that email address and password. We need to see what that is and we need to see if there's any other headers that we need to include to make that API work. So let's take a look at that. So is there, let's go to documentation. Maybe it, I like to see it that way a little better. Let's see in Swagger, sign up. Okay, so it's in the body. So you can send, in this case, I have name, email, and password. So let's just put another field on there for name so that we can fill in all three of them. Um, and then we'll send a body over that's literally just name, email, password, and we'll get the value from the fields that are on that form. 
So back in here, let's add one more element and we'll uh, get a text input here and I'll put it above the email and let's call this name. So now they're gonna enter name, email address, password, and then when they click sign up, which let's put that above, um, when they click sign up in the body of that request that we were building. So if we go down here to body, we're gonna have the first key that we're sending is name. We're gonna have two more keys, email and password. Okay, And then each of those is gonna come from these different fields. So we need to change the value right now. It's just a st static text, so I can just type it in, but we wanna change that to come from an element value on the current page. We're gonna pull name from name, change this one from element value, come from email, and then the password from element value to come from the password. Okay, so now what we should, when we click that button with this information in it, it'll send the API request over and let's see what Xano is going to respond with. So let's see, responses, all right. So it's gonna respond with an object called auth token. And that auth token is gonna be sitting inside of a variable. That whole thing is gonna be a variable that we're gonna set on our side. So looks like the only, it's just application JSON. So I think we're probably good other than that. So this is gonna set that response into a variable, into this variable name. So if we wanted to see it, instead of setting it that way, if I put a text box on here, um, so if I just put a text box here and I'll just say uh, sign up response, just so we can see it real quick. So we'll go events here. And then instead of the set as variable, we're gonna change it to set response into element. And then you select the element, which is that sign up response text box that I just put on there. So basically now it's gonna go out, sign up the user, and then it's gonna set the response in there. So I can actually see what that response is without having to check the variable and that kind of thing. You can also open the network, which I'll do so that you can see it going back and forth and see what that response is. All right, so let's try this. So I'm gonna hit preview, use the login page as my root page for now, which is just fine. And so we'll do mark, mark at builder.com. We'll just do mark as the password and then I'll open the network. So this is how I would do this typically. I would watch the network when I do it. So I click sign up and it looks like we got an error because there's a minimum password length requirement. So um, on that API call, I didn't do any like success flows or error flows yet. That's something else that we're gonna to wanna to make sure and handle here. What happens if we get an error on these steps? We need to show the message, we need to do that kind of, so we'll do that step as well. Um, but you can see here that if you're debugging it in the network, if you look at, there's, there's three tabs that you're typically gonna be looking at. One is the headers. This shows you um, what actually went out, which is our internal API call. The payload is gonna show you all the details we sent. So this is the URL we're sending out to method, the content type, and the content we're sending, which should be what is it put in here, right? So if this is different than what's in there, that probably means our configuration is wrong inside the API action or something like that. And then the preview and the response, those are basically the same thing. Um, and we can see here that it basically is that whole thing that came back here. All right, so let's go back to Xano. I want to see where their settings are and just look at like where, where do we put those minimums and things like that? Or can we change those? Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know how we can change that stuff. Abdo says user table, password field. Maybe here, yeah. Uh, required, no. No. Tell you what. We can figure that out another time because it's gonna be different in every API anyways. So we'll just change it to where we put in the proper thing. So it needs to be at least eight characters. So I'm just gonna do mark mark instead of just one mark. All right, weak password detected. Please use one number. Okay, mark mark one, let's try that. <laughs> Sign up, 
Okay, cool. Now we got a session token. So what we really want to do is actually go in a minute, we'll do success flow and error flow. We should come back here and do it again. And instead of putting the entire response that hold this JSON into that thing, we'll actually have a response message where we put just that response inside of it. So that way you're telling the user, hey, it needs to be eight characters or it needs to be whatever it is. Um, so if we look at the response on that third API call that worked, uh, payload's gonna be the same thing. You'll see the content that you sent, mark mark one here. The preview here shows me all the details. And what I got was auth token and then this big long auth token value. So this auth token is what we're gonna want to store in a variable, okay? We're gonna, I'm sorry, in a cookie. We're gonna wanna keep that in a cookie. So now if I'm not signed in with this user yet, say, that, say I open another browser session, they're gonna need to do the sign in, which is likely to be a very similar setup, except for you're not gonna uh, send the name necessarily. You're probably just gonna send like email address and password to get that information. So why don't we do that real quick and I'll show you the easiest way. Once you have one of these set up, you can go copy this, go to the other flow, paste it, and then now we need to go get a new URL for the sign-in, whatever it is over in there. Make sure that it's a post or whatever the method they're asking for. And then in the body, we're gonna remove or add any other things that we need. But that copy paste just makes it easier to kind of you know, get started quickly on the next one. So let's go back and look at sign-in real quick or log in, copy that endpoint, go back to builder in the URL, paste the endpoint, Go back to Xano, look again. Normally I'd probably have this on like different windows or different screens so I can quickly navigate back and forth. But um, so it is a post and we're just gonna send the email and the password only. Um, so that's fine. So let's go back over here. We can just remove the name by clicking this X. So now we're just sending email and password only. And if we now go over here and we click the sign in button, the zoom is in the way click sign in. So now it did the sign in this time, right? So, or login. And again, we got back a different auth token. So every time I do that, it should be creating a new auth token for me for this session to use. So now the next step is regardless of whether we signed up or signed in, it's going to be put into the same spot. So we need to create a success flow for these actions, for these UR, uh, API actions. So that way, if it's successful, we need to take that auth token and store it in a cookie locally in that browser session. So basically that browser session has access to that cookie. And then every other thing we do later, like creating a customer record in my app is probably what we'll do. The creation of that needs to include this auth token in the process. That way Xano knows it was marketbuilder.com that created that user or that customer and not some other user, right? So, Let's go back over here and let's create a success flow. So I'm just gonna say uh, sign in success. And we're gonna do two things. One is um, I'll probably do something like set a style property on the response of display none. I'm just gonna hide it if it doesn't have a you know, if it does, if it's successful, I don't need to say success. I'm just going to do the next thing. Um, and then I'll do another action here. And if I just type in cookie, I can do a set cookie here. Okay. So we have to define a couple things. What is the cookie name? What's the value of the cookie? How long do I want this thing to last in days? So you can basically force them to re-sign in after a certain amount of days. Um, and then do I need a path? And in this case, we, we don't need to modify that. We'll just use this one thing. Um, so I'm gonna call the cookie uh, Xano token, something like that. And oh, there's one thing I missed. Right now I'm setting that response into this element. I need to set the response, the, the actual full response needs to go into a variable for me to reference here. So that way I can get the cookie value out of the auth token that's in that variable. So if we go back to the sign up, we'll start there. So remember down here where I said, set the response into an element, 
we're going to change that back to save response as a variable, which is the default. We'll save it into the current page. You can change that to anything you want. Current and root in this case is the same because I'm on that login page, which is the root page. Um, so depending on what you're doing, you'll set it either locally or in the root. Root is usually good because if you do this as like a nested page where you like open a light box, open the page into the light box, if you set this as root, then you can reference that from anywhere else. So it's usually the better way to do it. We'll call this Xano token is the name of the variable. And on success, we're going to run a flow on the current page called uh, sign in success, which is the one we just created. And then I'm going to go ahead and make another flow. We'll call it sign in uh, error. <clears throat> and I'm not going to put anything in there yet. We'll come back to it. But on the sign up, we'll come down here and on the very last one, which is the flow to run when there's an error, we're going to say sign in error. So now if it's successful, it's going to run the success flow. If there's an error, it's going to run the error flow. So now we've got a good setup here for sign up. If it's good, we're going to get a variable that has uh, the Xano token inside of a variable called Xano token. And then we're also going to run the success flow, which in the success flow, we're going to now set a cookie rather than keeping it in a variable because a variable goes away if they hit refresh on their browser. Whereas a cookie stays there until it expires with whatever you put this as. So Xano token now needs to come from the variable that's on the root page. And in this case, I called it the exact same name but there's a little more to it. And the reason there's a little more to it is because inside of that variable is this entire thing. So it's not just the actual auth token that I need, it's the whole object, right? So it's gonna be an object, auth token, colon, like this whole string will be in that variable. So rather than setting the whole variable inside the token, uh, inside the cookie, excuse me, what I want to do is only set the value of auth token. So I only want this thing in here. And we can do that with a path. So all I have to do is set a path of auth token here, right there. So what it's going to do is go into the variable called Xano token. The API set that variable with the whole object. And then it will step into that JSON and find the auth token property inside the JSON and get just the value of that auth token and store that as my cookie. And then once we've got that in my cookie, now I can use it for the rest of the requests. So before we go any further, I need to go fix my sign-in because my sign-in is still setting it into that element as well. We wanna save that as a variable. We wanna set it as auth token, I'm sorry, as Xano token. So it's the same exact setup. So normally I wouldn't have done it into an element to start. I would copy, when you copy and paste, it's already all done. Um, but if we go current page, same thing, sign in success, current page, sign in error. So now both the sign in and the sign up, get the response from Xano, set it into a variable. If it's successful, it goes through success. If it's an error, it goes through error. So now let's just go I'm going to refresh this so it's just clean and I don't have this auth token sitting in there so we can see that it doesn't set anything in there anymore. Um, so let's clear everything out and we'll do mark at builder.com and mark mark one sign in and you can see I hid that so it went through successful I remember and I hid that and the HTTP call was successful it set the auth token. And now if I go up here and I go to cookies, we can actually look and see inside of here, I have a cookie called Xano token. So we know that that actually created that cookie specifically for this page, for this user. And I can actually go look at it here. So this is the, this is that token. <clears throat> so it went and got the token, brought it back, took exactly what was in the auth token, set it into that cookie. So now we're in a great state. Now we have exactly what we need for all the future requests to tell Xano whenever you go create a record or whatever, 
this is gonna this is the user that's doing it without them having to re-sign in. And because this auth token, I set this cookie to not have to not ever expire, the cookie will always be there until I replace it, the value. So like if they sign in again, it's gonna replace the value, but the cookie's never gonna go away. In Xano's backend, they probably have, and we don't really need to go through it, but they probably have some settings also for their authentication sessions. Like how long do these tokens last for them? You could do it as infinite, you could do it as a day. It depends on how often you want your user to have to re-sign in. Okay, so let's go done here. I don't wanna remove that. So now that I'm signed in, I have the token and I have the token in a cookie, the next thing we need to do is go to Xano and look at how to create a customer record. So I'm gonna go into Xano and by customer, I mean create a record. Um, let's go. Just want to go here. Okay, so in my customers, I created these two tables. So I'm just let's just do customers. So I'll create a customer here. Oh, and it looks like I had created some back in August when I made this thing. Um, so let's go related API endpoints. So we can do a get of all the customers. We can create a customer record. Let's do that, and then let's also do a, a get of all the customers and set it into a grid so we can like see how these things flow back and forth. And Drew and Cora, make sure to stop me if there's questions that you think I should stop and answer. I just replied to one, which is it's kind of like a good distinction to point out. But when you set that variable, um, you didn't set root page, you did current page. Oh. And I uh, just want to point out that it, that's correct. It should have been root page, but in this case, it works because there's only one page. So the current page is the root page. But you're absolutely right. And I normally uh, here will set these to go to root page but it just depends on what your context is. There are times where like you've opened two different things in the same root page, but you've opened them like into containers. So you have two or three different things and each of them runs their own API calls and gets these things back and forth. And you wanna set those all on the current page and reference them in the current page. So that's why we give you those options. Uh, but for the purposes of this, you're only gonna have like one sign-in thing, you know? And you probably wanna store that in a root variable to reference exactly like Drew just said, because the current page is the root page in this context, Builder just accepts both of those because when it looks in the current page, it already is the root. And when it looks in the root, it already is the current. Cool, cool. Um, so let's go to this endpoint here. So this is going to create a customer. So we have a post is what we need to do. We have an endpoint URL, just like the other one. Um, so I can copy that. And for this one, I can do this in a couple of ways. Uh, let's do create customer. And actually, why don't we do this on a second page? So we have like our login page and then we have like a, cut, a create page. So I'm gonna delete that from here. And then I'll just do a blank page again. Okay. And I'm actually going to go over here and just copy this and then just paste it here because <laughs> I'm gonna use a bunch of the same stuff. So I'll delete this. We'll go sign up. Instead of sign up, it's gonna be create customer and we won't have a password. So we're just gonna create a new customer. So this is new customer page and you can do, we'll, we'll have a name and we'll have a email address and we'll create the customer doing that click on click of the button, we're going to do create customer flow, maybe create customer in Zeno. And then we're going to add an action here. And now we have some options here. We can go to the uh, Zeno endpoint API post action. We could also just use the generic API call. They actually use the same set of information. It's just this one sort of removes some of the things that you don't need, like it automatically assumes it's a post, so you don't have a method to choose from, but you're still either way gonna have to go get the URL because it will be specific to your endpoint. Like they generate these over in whatever third party you're using. So you'll need to go get that, but it would be the same here as if I went post and did this and filled it all in, exact same set of steps. So I'll delete this. We'll just use the, the Xano one in this case, but it's the same thing for any other one. You might have to just use the general one. Uh, but it's the same idea. So in the post body here, we need to go look and see 
what I have as names. So we have the name field and we have the email field. So those are the two things we're gonna be sending. So just like when we did the API call for the auth, we're gonna have two key value pairs here, one for name, one for email, same exact thing. I'm gonna pull that from the fields on the page that the user will type into. So from here and from email. Um, and then same idea. So do I want to set this into a variable as the response? Do I want to set the uh, set it into an element as the response? What happens on success? What happens on failure? That kind of stuff. Um, and set response data, target page. Okay. Actually, there are no six error and success flows on here. This needs to be a task. This should have error and success flows on this. Um, I don't know how that was missed. That needs to be, Cora, can you write a task? I'm sorry, what's the action? This is for the Xano API endpoint post. We need success and error flows on this because if you don't, then you, you can still do success and error flows, but you would have to check it manually. Like you'd have to add an action that's like condition here and put a weight between. And then you would check the response, which is what we do internally when we put those success error flows in. We just check that response and go, if it's, a, if it's success, do this one, if not do that one. So basically you would go, um, you know, if the response variable name, whatever it is, dot whatever message it is, and you would check that against something else like error, whatever it's called, or the response code, and then go run your success and error flows, depending on if that's true or false. So if it's an error, run the error flow, otherwise do a success flow or something along those lines. It's effectively what we do when we do the API call. Um, Can I interject so for a second um, yeah. with the comments? The um, people are talking about things getting returned as arrays. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to add in that basically, I mean, almost literally every API in the world is gonna return an array of values. And what we do a lot of times with these special actions, like the Xano action that we're looking at, we take the generic API action, which you'll get an array back because every API gives you an array. And we use that to like parse through the array ourselves and output the right thing. So like for the Airtable um, actions, it gives you just the, the responses you need already parsed out of that array. But technically everything always comes in as an array. It's, it's like just how APIs work usually. Yeah, if it's like a response message, like in the login, it was just, it's always going to be a message. That'll be an object in JSON. But if it's dealing with data, it's almost right. object or array. array. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's usually JSON is the point. It's, yeah. it's usually you're the, almost never you call an API endpoint and just get the value you want yeah. back. You always get a key value pair of some sort. It's super rare. I don't think I've ever actually seen one that does it. That does just like, here's the actual value you need. It's more like, Here's the name of the value you need, followed by the value you need every time. Yeah, just like and I'm saw. not sure. It says like uh, George Harrison it hits in Postman. It, it doesn't have that. I'm not sure how that works. I, I mean, I'm almost positive that Xano is always returning an array or an, or an We'll see in just a sec what it does. Um, I'm going to change this to the regular API. Oh, I see. If it's a single item, they do. So they're being smart. So that, that's actually really cool on Xano's end. Good, good. And actually, I'm going to do the, the, the standard API call for two reasons. One is I want to use the um, the success and error flows, but also I want this, this tutorial for people to go back through and follow along with to actually work for any other third party. So we're going to do it with this call as well. And we'll see what that, just like we did on this first one where we look to see what is the response we're getting. We'll do the same thing. Let's just set it into an element and see what we get back. And then that will determine. The other way you can do it too, I usually don't trust it, but usually you can go to the documentation and they'll show you what that response is going to be. So like in here, the post, you'll see that the response you're gonna get back is this object like this, right? And I think Xano's docs are almost 100% accurate and they're great, but a lot of APIs that you go deal with may not be. Like the docs are way out of date and they're wrong. And so I almost always just go instead and look at it, like just set it into an element, show me what it is. And then I know what I'm actually dealing with. Um, once we have some trust in it, like in Xano, we can go do what Drew said and just like default all that into specific actions because we know it's just going to return that. Um, sometimes we'll actually make it real smart too and go, if it returns an array, go in and get it from the first object in there. If it returns an object, just go get the value. Like we can do that stuff in the back end too, just to automate it. 
So let's do this as a post. I'm gonna put this in here for the create. And then I have to also go add my name and my email in and same exact setup we did a moment ago, but doing it on the generic one now and email. Okay. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to set it into an element on the current page. So let me add the text box here because I did not copy that one over. And this will be right here. This will be the create customer response. And back in here, we need to select that element. So we're going to set that response into there. So now we have a choice of how we want to go access this new customer page, right? I've got it on a separate page. So normally you would have like a button on here that like opens a light box and you put the new customer in there or like slide in a panel or however you want to do it. Um, you can also have it as its own route if you want to, however you want. Um, I think I'll do it as a light box just for sort of consistency across these different Let's put it at the bottom. It's not going to display anyways, because it's default hidden. And then we're going to make a flow to show lightbox. And we'll remove the display none classes. And there are other tutorials on doing this part. So I'm not going to go into much detail here. We'll just do it. Basically, I'm just creating a flow that's going to show the light box. I'm going to make another one that hide the light box. And we're going to add some classes there. We're going to add hidden to the outer. Duplicate that. We're going to add the other hidden to the inner. All right. And then we'll put a button on here to open, create customer, something like that. And that flow, I'll make a flow for it. Open, create customer. And we use our open page action. Oops. So you can use either one of them. I'll just use the new one here. Um, so the page to open is gonna be the new customer and we're gonna open it into the light box inner. And then I'm going to nest the show light box flow in here. So this flow, when you click that button, is going to run and it's going to open the page into that container and then it's going to show the light box. So I'm still on my login page, but we're still going to do this. And I might need to refresh here. When you add a new page, sometimes you have to refresh that. There we go. Um, okay, so now I've got that other page opening. So one thing to note, if you were to like reference that auth token in a variable rather than in a cookie, you would have to basically go set that create customer up to reference the variable to know who the user is. But then the problem is if they refresh the page, you've lost that token, you have to go get a new token and all that. Having it in the cookie is gonna keep it persistent until it basically uh, expires. And so we didn't set any of that up yet. And I'm curious to see, I don't, I don't know what Xano's backend requires here. So like it might, I don't know if that's set up with auth or not on the customer thing. Like if it's requiring auth or if it's not requiring auth, I don't know, I don't know what it is as default. So I'm just going to try creating a customer and we're going to see what happens here. So uh, I think there's already one in there called Mark. So I'm just going to do something different. So we'll do Mark2 at builder.com. Oops, builder.com. And we're going to click create the customer. All right, so I guess auth is probably not required on Xano's backend right now on that table, right? Because it let me do it even though I didn't tell it anything about which token to use to pass it over and it let it create it. Um, so it did actually create that record over in there. I must have not associated the name properly here. I don't know, I'll go, I'll go check that out. Um, but it returned back without a name, right? So let's go look in Xano and see what happened here. So actually, I think I can go to database, customers. Yeah, so it created this one without a name and without the email. So I must have something wrong on my action over there. Um, and let's see about fixing that. Let's see, what did I do wrong there? Did I not set it up? I did. Let's see if it's in the request. 
So this is the request that went over. And if we look at the payload, I did send name and email. Are they called name and email? Oh, lowercase, look at that. Lowercase name, lowercase email. It returned with uppercase N on it. I bet it's case sensitive and it's gonna require that to be exact. So because in here, I put lowercase N and lowercase E, it didn't catch that that was it. And it, it just basically, I think what happens is Xano just ignores any fields that don't match, right? So it just created a blank record basically. So let's do that one more time now that we have that in there, right? So now we have a name of Mark II in there. So if we go back to Xano, and I think I can probably just refresh this. There we go. So now we have Mark II and Mark II at Builder, right? So we created our record, but it's not requiring auth. So all that auth stuff we did is not even necessary for doing this type of call over to um, create a customer in Xano, but there's probably a way in here in Xano, which I'm gonna figure out right now, I've never done it before. So we're gonna go look and see how do we turn on authentication to re be required for this customer to even be created in the first place. And then once we turn that on, we'll go back over to our builder page, try to send it and we should get an error. It should say you have to be signed in. And then from there, we'll add our token to it and then it should allow it to go back and forth. Um, so I don't know, it's probably in here. Kendo says table setting for off and uh -huh. Abdo says endpoint settings. Oh, both. Oh, maybe you have to out. do both. Is this table settings? Is that overall? Set? No, this is it. Okay, authentication disabled right here. So that needs to be enabled. So it's going to require authentication. Let's see if that's enough. So if I click create customer again, it looks like it got an error. Oh, uh, no, it didn't. It still sent that. So maybe now we have to also do it on the API endpoint. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Um, it did go through though. So 200, it created another one with the same name, which is what I was expecting because I didn't change that. So we should have another one. Yep. All right. So let's now go to the endpoint. Well, first of all, let's make sure that's saved. Okay. So it is showing authentication is, is enabled. Uh, So let's go to the endpoint and go here, toggle authentication. So let's do add customer toggle authentication. And then we'll go back over here and I'll change this just in case it goes through. Create customer, let's see what we get now. So it's waiting for the response and there it is. Access is denied. You didn't include authentication, right? So, so now what we need to do is go look at their API and go, okay, where do I put that token in my request in order for it to work? Okay, so let's go back over to Xano, go into the post for create customer, maybe look at the docs. So in here, oops, the post. Hmm, this is not required, but it should be. this one. So I went to this one. I think this is where it's you're you're basically updating probably that specific customer ID is what that's doing. And this one is, you know, adding a new customer record, which is where we put that authentication required. Um, so where do we add? Oh, there's an act, there's an accept header that we need most likely. And there's probably a bearer. Hmm, not actually sure. We can see this somewhere, I'm sure. So honestly, normally when I get to this point, I'm like, well, let me just try a couple things. Let's see, let's see if like normal headers do it. Um, There's comments in the chat too. I don't know if it's like, yeah, you need to add into the header authorization yeah. bearer auth token. So it is the bearer is what you use. So in the header, I think I saw in here that it might also be requiring an accept header, you know? And so here we might need to add accept, which is usually this. And then here we would have uh, authorization. And this, this is where it gets like tricky in different APIs. I know, I just know this stuff because I've done enough APIs. It sounds like other people in the in here do too. 
but usually you'll find it somewhere in here. I may just not be seeing it in here properly, you know? Um, a lot of times there's a general authorization section in docs and they don't include that information on every call. And like, but you'll have to like, like the first thing you read in the getting started will be like how to auth in. Mm -hmm. So this is if you want to add that token here directly for doing testing here. So you kind of get, get clues. And honestly, uh, Xano's API docs are like fantastic compared to a lot of the stuff you're going to deal with. If you're trying to use APIs in general, like you'll go look at it and it'll tell you that you need this one thing and you actually need something totally different. And so I've gotten to the point um, where I'm just kind of like, let me just try a couple things. Cool. Trojan is saying, make sure bearer has a space after it. I don't yep. know if we check that or not. Yeah, for we're sure. About to type that now. Yeah, so right here, there's this header name. So the, the three headers I'm gonna send are content type, accept, and authorization. And in authorization, what I need to do, authorization like 90% of the time is the word bearer and then a space and then that token that we just got from signing in the user. Like that's almost always what the, bear, what the authorization is gonna be. Sometimes it's different. It can technically be anything. <laughs> so, um, but the standard is bearer space that. So what I have to do is concatenate a couple things together. So I need to use the concatenate type for the authorization. And we're gonna type bearer and then a space, okay? And that is what Trojan was saying. If you don't put that space in there, it's not gonna put the space and it's gonna put the token and the bearer together and it'll fail because they're not gonna parse that and read it properly. So I'll add another value here. And what I need to do is get that token out of the cookie, right? And use it right here. So one thing I really wanna add, we haven't done it yet, is inside of here, I wanna give you direct access to cookie values so that you don't have to do the step I'm about to do. But what we're going to, because we don't have that direct access inside of that menu yet, what we're going to have to do is prior to this API call, we're going to set the set a variable with the value of that cookie. And then we're going to reference that variable here. Okay. So we're going to go from a variable and we're going to go root page and we're going to call it, I'm just going to do something different. So it's a separate one. Zeno auth token is what I'm gonna reference. So I'm just gonna copy that because that's what I'm gonna reference. And then right above it, I'm gonna do cookie again. And there's this one called get cookie. I want that before the API call runs and I want a wait between, right? And then the, the cookie that I want is that other cookie, right? So the variable that I wanna set it into is gonna be what, I, what I'm referencing in the API call. Okay, so now I need to say, which cookie am I getting? couple ways I can go get that. One way is I can go back here. Like if I came back to this the next day, I'm not going to necessarily remember what I'm naming all these things or whatever. So I'm going to go back over here, take a look at uh, the success flow, set cookie, and the cookie name was Xano token. The other way that I could do that is inside of here, after I'm signed in, I can always go click on the little lock, go to cookies, open the one that's the full URL. So this might be different. Like if you've published to a subdomain, it would be like subdomain.builder.com or if you publish to a custom domain, it'll be your actual custom domain. Then open cookies and it's called Xano token here. I can see the cookie here now. So you're basically manually referencing this cookie that you're storing locally. Let's go back over here, back into this. And the cookie name we want is Xano token. Okay, so now the steps that are gonna run when they click create customer, we're gonna go get the Xano token, which I usually put that same name in here so I can see get cookie Xano token. And we're gonna put that into a variable first, into this variable called this, Xano auth token. And then in the API call, we need to reference that right here. But note, I selected root page. If I leave that, it's not gonna work. And the reason is this sets it into the current page, which is the new customer. So this needs to get it out of the current page. So one thing about variables, just in general, there's variables have a scope and a scope means the context of that variable, like where is the variable? And in Builder, each page you open is a scope that you can set a variable into. So if you think about, you have a root page that opens in the main URL route, 
That's the root variable scope. You open another page into a light box or into a div or something like this new customer page, that is another scope. And anything you run inside of that page, you can use current page as the scope and it will get and retrieve and set variables within that scope. The third scope is in rows in a grid. You have the same page over and over and over again. So each of those has their own current page scope, depending on what's going on inside of those particular rows. So now we're sending the bearer with a space, make sure there's a space, and then concatenating that with the Xano auth token. So let me go done. And we're going to try this again and see if we get it back. Cool. So now if we go look at the headers here, um, I'm sorry, the payload here, we can see what we actually sent. So this is what we sent to them, right? And in Xano, we should see, if I go all the way back, oops, database, customers, we should see Mark three in here now. Okay, so now all other calls in Xano that require authentication can use that auth token and it will be known to Xano that that particular user was the one that requested those records, that created the record, that modified the record, whatever it is. Um, so if we kind of take a step back, we signed up or signed in, that creates an authentication token from this third party data source. We take that token, we store it into a cookie, and then we're gonna use that in all the other API calls that we do with that third party data source. The cookie has expiration on it, which mine was set to zero. So it's gonna be indefinite unless you like literally clear the cookie or update the cookie. Um, it'll just stay the same and stay there forever in that browser. Usually you want these things to expire. And I would expect Xano has some expiration on these tokens that they're doing. There's one other piece here. One day. So in the Sorry? Chat, Xano's expiration is one day. One day, okay. So yeah, I would I would suggest then if you're doing Xano, um, when you go and do the set cookie in here, it's on success, we would wanna match that up, right? Oops, we would wanna match that. So I would change this to one day. That way you go get it, it sets it, comes back, we set it and they expire at the same time. Cause otherwise you're gonna basically have errors. If you, on the second day, it's gonna return an error saying that the token's no longer valid. Um, which leads me to the one thing we haven't actually handled here, which is errors that occur, right? So in builder data, we basically just have, and we make it fairly simple for you. Like if you're signed in, it won't give you the data. I mean, it won't give you the data unless you're signed in, if you've set that to require auth, um, if, and you're not having to manage this, this authorization token and go get a new one and all that stuff. But with third party data, you actually need to manage that. So you need to say, if I go and do this create customer and I send an old token that's no longer valid, right? So like, let's say I go in here and instead of concatenating in this variable, I'm just going to concatenate and I'll copy this out because I'll put it back in. Oh, it's already in there. Um, I'll just basically concatenate in another text value. I'm just going to, you know, an invalid token basically. All right. So if I go run this again, let's do mark four. So this is like two days go by, user comes back to their browser. You have an old token that's no longer valid in Xano. You click create and it's going to return this, this error access code. I got an error. So what that means is now in the API call, we need to go set up a flow that says, if you got an error, go get, go redirect them to the sign-in page or do whatever you want to happen whenever that occurs. Like you need them to re-sign in basically at this point. Um, and so you'd probably like, if I were doing this and I was doing, I would have a error flow, I'd have a success flow. Uh, let's go create customer success. And I would copy that because I'm going to make another one for error. And then in my create customer API call at the end, we're going to do that same thing where we run a create customer success flow. And on error, we run a create customer error flow. And in this case on the error, what I'm going to do is literally just refresh the page. 
because it's going to go my login page is like my default page here. But normally, I think you'd probably route them to a login or run a flow that opens the login page or something inside the app. But it just totally depends on what you're trying to do. Um, so if I did open page into browser, and we're going to open it in the current tab, and we're going to open the slash. So now if I go back here and I click create customer again, it got the error and it's actually redirecting it, right? And it just like redirected and reloaded the whole page because that's what I told it to do. But really you'd want it to do whatever it is, like make them log in again and then bring them back to where they were or depending on the app, you might like get really sophisticated with it and like track where they are. Like for instance, if you go into builders.com slash studio when you're not signed in, Drew redirects you to the sign in page there, but he also brings the context of where you were and that you were trying to go to like that project or something. Like if you have a project link and you go to it, but you're not signed in. And then when you sign in, he actually redirects you back to that project that you were trying to get into. So as you get further and further down these paths, you can like get smarter about the UX of all these different error flows. So I think that covers like all the main bases, but there's a lot to clean up here if I was gonna go make this real, right? You need to go put success and error flows that are proper on the sign up, on the sign in, you probably have different pages for those. You would have these opening in different routes, things like that. Um, but that's pretty much the basics of it all. If you can do this setup, you can pretty much replicate that setup across all the different types of calls.